Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to talk with you about using Decoder Pro to program the decoders in your locomotives, even though you don't have or even want a computer interface to your model railroad. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I realize that there are a lot of folks out there who aren't interested in purchasing an interface uh, so that they can connect their computer to their model railroad, even though it can make things a lot easier when it comes to programming. At any rate, what I want to do is show you a way that will allow you to use the Decoder Pro program to make your programming a lot easier. You know, there are a number of CVs in uh, DCC that are pretty straightforward. I mean, an address of 3 in CV1 is pretty simple and straightforward to program. And I showed how to do that along with a lot of the other uh, basic 8 CVs, as I call them, in a, a video that I did uh, not long ago on programming the basic 8. And I'll put a link to that, hopefully right here above my head. And that is fairly straightforward to program. However, there are other CVs that are much more complicated. CV29 is one I showed you how to calculate, or I showed you how to, how to program anyway, uh, in, an, in a video I did on long addresses in CV29. And one of the real complications when it comes to those is, you just don't, you know, for a long address, if you got 2464, you can't enter 2464 into CV17 and 18. It's a much more convoluted calculation to come up with values that go into those two CVs. And the same thing goes for CV29. There are several different functions that CV29 con controls, and there's a different bit in uh, the byte that goes into CV29 that has to be calculated. And it's just a lot easier in the long run if you let Decoder Pro, the program, do all those calculations for you. And to be honest with you, CV29 is one of the easier ones. There are some others that are much more complicated. So what I want to do uh, right here is uh, show you on my laptop, where I have Decoder Pro installed, uh, how you can go about using it just, you know, on the computer without any inter interface at all to be able to calculate those complicated CVs. And then you can just write them down and program them into your decoders by hand using your throttle just like you would, you know, changing the address. So let me go ahead and we'll get uh, the computer started up and I'll give you a, a, a quick tutorial on how to do that. Okay, so I've already uh, opened up my, uh, my roster here in Decoder Pro. And when you set up your uh, copy of D Decoder Pro, after you download it from their website, uh, just follow their instructions uh, to go through the setup steps. And the initial screen that will come up will, you know, allow you to enter a, a file name or a name for your railroad and things of that nature. Um, and then it's going to ask you uh, about the connections and uh, setting up the connections. Well, you're going to come up with a window like this one here. I'm going to bring up Preferences. And you'll see connections right here. So in this case, I've gone ahead, I've set it up, and you can, you can choose any one of these DCC systems here. I decided to use uh, Sprague DCC, and one of the options, you know, there's a lot of different options for Sprague. Um, but what you want to use, since you do not have an interface, is the Sprague simulator. And for every one of these types of DCC systems that are listed here, there will be a simulator version. And what that does is, is it allows you to work with Decoder Pro just as if it were hooked up to an active DCC system and uh, it will function normally by simulating that interface. Okay, so that allows you to use it that way. So that's all you have to do. But there's one other thing I want you to change before you move on. And that's go down here to Roster and then click on Programmer. And one thing right here, see, show CV numbers in tooltips. It's very important for this that you have that checked. 
and then go ahead and click on Save. And it will automatically restart. You can click on this for Sprog, and it comes up again. And now you're ready to go to work. What I suggest you do is create a new loco. You can enter a bunch of dummy names or whatever, but pick one of your locomotives that you have and uh, click on the type of uh, decoder that's in it. Let's say it's a Soundtrax, and it's a Soundtrax uh, Economy Diesel. So I'm going to click on an Eco. Uh, let's do a plug and play right here. Okay. And this is what will happen. It will come up like this. Um, set it up for whatever you want at this point or nothing. You can go ahead and just open the comprehensive programmer. And that's what will come up. Then go ahead and start entering the basic information. So we can call this a dummy 444, okay? And then you can fill all this stuff in with road name and number and manufacturer, the whole nine yards. And what this allows you to do, you can go ahead and build your roster of locomotives um, just as if you had an interface. You can enter all of this information about the locomotive and the model and everything, the type of decoder, any notes you want to make about it, and then you would save it to the roster. And that will create an, an, an entry in that initial roster screen that I just showed a minute ago for this particular locomotive. And that will, um, that will allow you in the future to come back and you can open that file again and keep working with it so you don't lose all those changes that, you, that I'm going to show you how to make in a minute. Plus, if at some time in the future you do decide that you want to go ahead and uh, purchase an interface for your DCC system, then you've already got a roster created and you're ready to go. So you don't have to start all over again. So give that a thought about using the system as it is, not only as a tool, but a way to organize information about your locomotive fleet. Okay, so we've got a little bit of information here. Let's move on to the basic one. So in this case, we can see that the short address here is associated with CV1. And I covered this in the uh, video I did on programming the basic eight. And, you know, there are basic CVs that you can just enter them with your throttle manually. And you really don't need to do this. Okay, because CV, a value of, of three entered into CV1 is pretty straightforward. And that's what this would be. Uh, with the extended address, though, you have to use CVs 17 and 18. So let's say we want to make this 4444, okay? Um, then that's going to be the extended address, and we know it's in 17 and 18. So let's see what that will be. So right down here, you can look up what it has created. So I entered 4444, and the values to create that or to save that into uh, your uh, CV 17 and 18 would be 209 and 92, respectively. Now you can look up and the, 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 what goes into calculating this, but this is why I suggest using this. Is some of these calculations can be convoluted, and it's just easier in the long run to let uh, Decoder Pro do those calculations for you. After you make the changes, you can come in here, here into the CV list and look up what, what should be written to memory. Then you can go back and continue. So here we've done 4444, uh, primary address was in CV1. Now, a lot of what's on this page also goes into CV29. So we've got this one, the short address format, that's CV29 bit 5. The direction is 29 bit 0. The speed steps is 29 bit 1. The power conversion is 29 bit 2. So there's a number of these things that you can uh, modify here. So let's look up and see what CV29 is now. You can see it's sitting there. It's a value of 6. But let's change some things. Let's go in. And we're going to make this a normal direction. Um, let's set for digital only. Okay? We don't want analog conversion. Um, and then you go look it up. And you can see that it has changed to a value of 2. Okay? Um, what else is there in here? 
Uh, normal, 28, 128, can do digital. That's pretty good. Um, but let's select long address instead of the short one. Now let's go back. Okay, so now we're at a value of 34. So you would just write that once you finish working with all of the uh, entries for CV29, then you would look up this final value and, you know, write down CV29 equals 34. And then you would just take that after you're finished and enter that into your throttle uh, using the programming steps for your DCC system and program CV29 to a value of 34. And you haven't had to do all the calculations uh, required for this. Now another one, let's look, you know, consisting. That's another complex one because you've got uh, a number of different uh, CVs involved. This one here is CV22, bit 0, okay? This one's CV22, uh, uh, bit 1, and all of these are 21, bit 0 through, oh, there's CV22, bit 2. So you would need to go through here and make all the changes and then look it up on your CV list and see what 21 and 22 are. Right now there's zero because I didn't change anything. But it's fairly straightforward to go through there and make all those changes. That's about all there is to it. And like I said, do a save up here or when you're done so you won't lose all this information. Okay. And then we're going to quit. Okay. And we'll quit the program. Well, I, uh, I imagine I don't have a lot of you running out to buy a computer interface at this point, but hopefully in the future, if you change your mind, you'll be ready. Um, so go ahead, uh, give this a try. It's free. I'll put the link to the, uh, to the uh, website for the JMRI Decoder Pro program where you can download it and install it on your uh, computer. Uh, they have a number of different versions. I've got it running on uh, computers that go all the way back to Windows 2000 and uh, various ones in between. I also have it on a Mac. So there are both Macintosh and Windows versions of it. There's a Linux version if you go that way. So there's a lot of different options as far as installing it on computers. And to be honest with you, it, it really is a great tool if you just want to invest in, you know, an interface to be able to allow you to use it to program your decoders. Um, I hope you got something out of this. Even if you're not interested in computers, you can still make use of a computer program to do the hard work for you. Take it easy. We'll see you later.